Hello everybody, it is so good to see you here again. I appreciate that you're here and holy shit, what a year and a half it has been. I know it's been so long since I last made a video and to be quite honest, my life had been a shit show up until about six months ago and I'm starting to finally get back on my feet and it's about time to get back into doing what I love and that's making content. And I'm here to give you guys a brief update, so thank you for being here. Now, let's get into the chaos that has been my life for the past year. The last live stream and the last video I believe I made, again, was a little over a year ago. It, the last video I posted was a Nintendo Direct. Obviously, you guys can see, uh, if you've watched my videos in the past, that this is not my room, my old bedroom. This is not the same space that you guys are used to. And I also apologize for the mess because there's like boxes and shit everywhere because again, my life was like upended. I now have fun, colorful blue hair and piercings and I plan to get so much more. But let's go into the past. So some of you guys are aware that my situation while living with my family was super difficult. Anytime I was doing live streams or making videos, my mom or another family member would pop into my room and get mad that I was making videos or criticize me, you know, throw the Bible in my face. So for those of you that don't know, I was raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses and I was excommunicated from the Jehovah's Witness religion, my old congregation, back in 2019. And I started to get very deep into my content during the pandemic because it was a place of comfort for me. Um, for those of you who don't understand Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, I'll try to break it down into simpler terms. It's a very super duper closed off society. Some people will even call it a cult and I don't necessarily want to be labeled as an apostate, which is someone who is like the worst possible person considered to Jehovah's Witnesses. So I'm not going to say that they're a cult. No, they technically are. Anyways, um, I had lost all of my friends and family that were Jehovah's Witnesses by being excommunicated back in 2019. They were not allowed to talk to me. I lost my ex who I was supposed to marry. So I guess you could say fiance, even though all I really had was a promise ring because we couldn't afford an engagement ring at the time. And yeah, I lost him, I lost my friends, and the only family that I could speak to were the immediate family that was living in my household. Now, my mom wanted so desperately for me to return to Nova's Witness organization, and when I was very mentally into it, that was my plan. Up until I did some more research, did a lot of personal digging, and found out a lot of things about the religion that I didn't like, um, I may do a video on that explaining how I grew up and talk more in depth about the religion, but that's for another time. So, while I was allowed to live in my mom's house, even though I was paying rent to live there, I don't know how well that's being allowed to live somewhere if you're paying rent, but whatever, um, there was constant fighting and arguing about the things that I wanted to do and about things that made me who I am as a person. And uh, it was super difficult. I just grinned and bared it and enjoyed it. Up until last summer, summer of 2022, where my mother had had enough, mostly my stepmom. I love my mom to death, and although we never saw eye to eye, I'm not going to sit here and villainize her and say she's a bad person. She was just doing what she believed was best in the eyes of her religion. And I respect that. I don't agree with it. I absolutely do not agree with all of the bullshit that Jehovah's Witnesses do, but I respect her efforts in trying to do what she believed was best. The home environment, again, was super toxic super dangerous and being kicked out was a blessing and yes i was kicked out despite paying rent <laughs> and covering all of my expenses but i was kicked out because it took me two or three years three years at that point and i still was not reinstated or brought back into the religion in order to do so i would have to write a letter about um, my repentance for all of my past sins and I felt about the religion and all of this fun stuff and I had been told in the past that you will be divinely inspired. When you feel God divinely inspire you to write your letter to come back then everything will be hunky-dory. 
And I thought that there was something incredibly wrong with me because I didn't feel divinely inspired. I didn't feel God's presence in wanting me back in the religion. And I thought I wasn't good enough. So there was a lot of self-hate. There was a lot of medicating, um, <laughs> antidepressants, anxiety, Ritalin for my ADHD, whole nine yards. But my mom kicked me out. And it was super difficult because, as many of you guys know, I'm from New York and there are a lot of places in that rent is ridiculously expensive. Like, I would need to have five or six roommates and I reached out before I got kicked out because I, I knew, I had a feeling it was coming. I reached out to some friends and there was really no one who had room for me or the living circumstances wouldn't work because I had my beloved cat, Matilda, who is running around the house right now that I'm currently in. So she's still around, happy, picking, living her best kitty life. I'm super happy for her because no longer is she trapped in my bedroom. She has a whole house to explore and it's just the best. But I was kicked out, had nowhere to go, and last minute had moved in X. Um, I'm not going to name and shame. That's not the point of this video. Uh, dear X, if you're watching this and if I say anything that upsets you, sorry. This is just my experience, my personal opinions, and these are the ways that you made me feel. Uh, again, I'm not naming and shaming you, so if you go out and expose yourself by saying, Oh yeah, I was the strawberry Venus's ex, and they were lying and blah 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 blah, that's on you. Anyways, I moved in with my ex, and I thought everything would be hunky-dory because I could go out and do whatever I wanted without having to worry about a stupid curfew, without having to worry about fighting with my stepfather and with my mom. I thought that I would be in a better and healthier situation out it was the and exact opposite of I loved my ex at the time because we connected on so many different levels huge fans of Nintendo big into content creation like I thought we're gonna be that kind I was happy I was excited um, and that didn't happen they did a complete 180 and the person that I thought I knew was not the person that I um, the living circumstances were hard. Most of my stuff was in boxes, with the exception of maybe a few clothes, some plushies that were really near and dear to me, and a little bit of makeup. And that was it. I didn't have my computer, couldn't make content, couldn't do shit. Um, and my ex was also very uh, toxic and abusive and narcissistic. Anything that I did it's always wrong. They always found a reason to scream at me, to force me to smoke weed because they claimed that smoking weed made me more open to speaking. But the more, uh, uh, sorry, I can't English. As the abuse continued, the more reluctant I began to speak my feelings. I became very withdrawn from friends um, and life was just super chaotic. The hardest part was my poor cat. She initially, on the first night that I moved in, kind of had free roam of the bedroom that I was sharing with my ex. My ex freaked the fuck out when she hid on the bed. Now, for those of you guys who are cat owners, you know that cats in new environments do stuff like that. They're gonna hide under furniture, find a dark corner until they feel comfortable enough to come out and my ex freaked the fuck out, took her out of the corner and chained her to the desk. My cat, for quite some time, had maybe feet of space in front of her. Litter box, food and water, she could not move. Um, which was incredibly difficult for me to see as a cat parent because she was miserable and had gotten to the point where she just wasn't eating and my heart was breaking. Um, I left that house, um, or that place rather. One day my ex was at work I packed up my shit and just left for the safety of my cat, for my own safety, my mental well-being. And it was hard because when you are a victim of essentially domestic abuse, you don't, those feelings that you have for that person don't detach. You're still madly in love with them, but you're also incredibly uncomfortable and fearful for your safety and your well-being, and you're also miserable. So I packed up my shit. I 
left. I went back to say like final goodbyes. There was a lot of crying and screaming and back and forth. And then I was just gone. I found out though that my ex, as soon as I left, went to go sleep with the person they were cheating not on me with. They were dating her and cheated on her with me. And she and her, her and I actually um, ended up finding each other on social media and had this really nice discussion. She's a wonderful person. I love her. Um, but yeah, that was my life for the past year, kind of incredibly hellish between the shit that I was dealing with with my family in fear of being kicked out of the only home I've ever really known, um, my home back on Long Island, and toxic situation. And for the sake of making this as safe for work as possible, I won't get into the specifics of the abuse. Um, although I will say they didn't raise a hand to hit me because that was always their promise. I may get mad at you, I may scream at you, but I won't hit you. But they were many other ways in which they have hurt me without actually slapping me across the face. So, there's that. So where does that leave me now? I am currently in New York. Um, I owe everything to my current boyfriend, my last boyfriend, my future husband, the father of my children. <laughs> we are currently living together with his father, rent is super cheap. We have two bedrooms and share the kitchen and a bathroom. We pretty much have the whole house to just share. His dad is super cool, but I don't know where I would be if it were. Um, I was really depressed, still dealing with feelings for my ex because, yeah, they did terrible shit to me, but I was still in love with them. And it was just a whole heaping mess. Of bullshit. Um, but they took care of me. I was unemployed for a long time, five or six months, and they paid for all of my expenses, took care of me, um, and they just genuinely love me. And I'm at the happiest point I've ever been in my life to the point where, like, if I go to Starbucks and they fuck up my drink, guess what? I'm not mad or upset about it because of all the shit that I've been through, my drink getting messed up at Starbucks is like the least of my problems. Um, as you can see, the room's a mess. This is going to be our designated game room. My boyfriend's desk is right next to mine, um, but that right there is a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> we are currently fostering a pregnant mama kitty who should be having her babies in like two weeks. So besides all the boxes in the back, there's a corner on the other side of the room that has whelping box for the babies and everything is all set up. So my life is still kind of a mix of being in and out of boxes. About a month ago, um, when I had started working the job that I currently have, which I absolutely love, I bought myself a dresser. I have a dresser now, so I was able to put all my clothes away. I uh, got a shoe rack for the closet, so I was able to put all my shoes away. So now it's just my figurines and Nintendo shit that are just hiding up there. Um, I've been super active on Twitter and on social media and just trying to kind of get back into the swing of things. Since I was dealing with being excommunicated and now missing my family, because now that I'm kicked out of my mom's house, she can't talk to me anymore. Um, she's talked to me maybe one or two times, mostly about legal stuff like paperwork. She needed to send me a passport, my birth certificate, and things like that. But otherwise, it's full no contact and it really fucking sucks. Like, even though my mom and I didn't get along, it's still my mom. Like, what person wants to not be able to speak with their mother? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, they, they treat me like I'm dead and it hurts. It, it really does. I miss my family. Um, I've kind of just been dealing with their loss because I know for a fact now, based off of everything that I've learned that I'm never going back to me. I'm finally free to express who I am as a person, funky colored hair, all the tattoos I want, bunch of piercings, being goth as fuck as I always have been. <laughs> and just being able to be happy and hang out with people that I choose and not just people that I have to hang out with or be friends with because they're part of my church. Um, I've made 
recently, since moving, some of the I met some of the really coolest people in the world. My coworkers are awesome, and I'm super looking forward to hanging out with them outside of the workplace. Um, but overall, life is pretty good. Um, probably wondering uh, why I'm going back into content creation. If you are, it's because this is something that I love doing. Working a full-time job sucks. It's super busy, but I need to work and make money. And then hopefully if my content creation career kicks off, I can make this my full-time job. Who knows? Um, but I decided to do all of this again because I was deeply inspired by people that I've met at the TOTK launch. For those of you who don't know what that is, that is Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I went to the launch. I flew back to New York City. Oh yes, I moved. I'm still in New York but I'm way far upstate, <laughs> like eight or nine hours away <laughs> now. So going to the city for day trips is not possible. It's like a day to drive there and to fly is only an hour. So I flew and I met a very good and longtime friend of mine, Toasty V1. Some of you are familiar with him. If you're not, he a streamer and YouTuber and just this amazing content creator. I have known this man prior to him having his kid, prior to him being married, and now he is happily married to his spouse. I have a beautiful baby boy that I've known his entire life, which is so crazy to fucking think about. But I finally got to meet Toasty in person along with Sage. Although I'm not super close to Sage, he's also super awesome. Like, Sage is so cool and I'm very happy that I got to meet him in person. We stayed outside the Nintendo store overnight. You can see all of Toasty V1's blogs. I'm going to link them into the comments, I mean into the description of the channel. He did a whole blog video series, it's awesome. But I got to go to the launch and I initially didn't have a reservation and this lovely gentleman named Pierre, Captain Rise, gave me his 10 a.m. so that I can go and get at 10. Yay! It wasn't the midnight launch, but I'm not complaining. It was cool just being outside of the store, just meeting these awesome people. And then I also had the privilege of hanging out with CND, Alex, the CND. I didn't know too much about him until Toasty V1 had introduced me to him. Um, right around the time that I had first met Toasty. And I'm just like, oh my God, CND is like a really cool dude. And we were hanging out at the line launch and CND was like, oh, I'm gonna go with the guys to film an unboxing. You coming along? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm coming along. This is so cool. Not that I'm trying to be uh, obnoxious and trying to be like, hey, can you plug my shit? No, I am just genuinely happy that I was able to meet because there's always this hesitation when meeting big YouTubers, or at least for me, because I'm always afraid of them having their online persona and then their actual persona being completely different. Uh, that was the case with my ex. Their online persona is completely different from the person they actually are. So there's a little fear in that, but Alex is just genuinely a sweet dude. Like he's really chill. Even if I never get to make content with him in the future or um, we don't actually do like work together, I just want to play Fortnite with this dude and just be casual friends. Like I don't even care about the whole, oh yeah, he's a famous content creator shit. Like all of that put aside, I just want to be friends with him. But yeah, it was incredible to be able to meet him, meet Toasty, to hang out with these guys. And it kind of just, brought back all of that spark and love that I had for making videos, for wanting to do Twitch streams. Um, I'm getting back into my art, which is really cool. I'm going to show you guys what I made for my good friend Toasty. He's currently playing Tears of the Kingdom and streaming it. Uh, not right this second. I mean, <laughs> in this time frame, he's playing the game. Um, I'm going to show you guys the artwork that I did for his stream layouts. And it's just really cool to be back. And getting into doing the things that I love. But anyways, I want to keep this as brief as possible. Obviously, if there's a lot of interest in the specifics of what's been going on, I will absolutely up you guys, up, up you guys, 
update you guys and maybe do a mini commentary series on the specifics of the shit that's been going down. But besides that, I'm happy, I'm thriving, I've been making new friends. This is going to be the first summer that I actually get to enjoy Pride Month. Uh, I never, my close friends know this about me. I didn't really come out to a lot of close Jehovah's Witness friends and family because being gay is a sin. <laughs> so yeah, hi guys, I'm the Strawberry Phoenix and I am bisexual, gender fluid person. <laughs> uh, that was also something that I never really talked about my gender just because I was really unsure about what it was exactly that I was feeling and I've come to terms with accepting that it is who I am so gender fluidity is on occasion or on some days I feel like I am a man and then other days I feel like I am a woman I'm not necessarily trans I don't really vibe with the they them pronouns because I don't feel like a they them I either feel like I'm a or I either feel like I'm a woman and this is what I've accepted about myself. I am a bisexual gender fluid person and I'm super excited to finally be able to for like the first fucking month of my entire life be able to celebrate pride and to be who I am and just uh. anyways thank you guys for watching this video. I know it was scattered. I know it was super all over the place but it's just a quick update. Going forward, uh, right now, my main focus is to get a new desk because the desk that I have is atrocious. It is so hard for me to do art on because there's nowhere to rest my arms, so my arms just like dangling as I'm trying to draw. Get all of my figurines and other shit like organized and to get this game room underway. I don't know if I'll necessarily be streaming on Twitch. I might be doing some art streams because I am redoing my layouts and such. And another big reveal, I forgot to mention this, don't know why, <laughs> I am going to be making a VTuber avatar. I love my mascot. I love my little phoenix girl and I love my phoenix bird. And not that I'm uncomfortable being behind the camera because I've shown you guys my face all the time as I am right now, but this mascot represents me to like my core and I would absolutely love to incorporate her in my content. My vlogs, of course, will still showcase my face, but going forward, once I get um, all of the kinks worked out and work with various artists to see who can make my avatar the way I want her to on my live streams, I will be represented by my mascot, the Phoenix. And I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited for the things that I have planned. 2022 was an absolute train wreck of bullshit, of heartbreak, of being in the hospital, of an attempt at my own life that I'm really happy didn't work out because I would have not been around to, you know, see all of this growth within myself it's just it's a good time and i'm excited i thank you guys so much for all of your endless support this year 2023 is all phoenix baby it's it's just gonna be great i'm so excited for the future content that i plan to make for the fun activities that the summer holds and i'm finally defrosting from my depressed miserable winter and getting back to the person that I've always been. And again, thank you guys for being here, for watching this video. If you have any ideas for content you want me to start doing again, like my Tokyo Treat unboxings or focusing on like visual novel games, let me know in the comments and let me know how you guys are doing. It's been so long since I've last tried to connect with my community, if I even still have one at this point. But yeah, let me know what's up with you guys. I'd love to catch up. But anyways, don't know when the next video is gonna be, hopefully sooner rather than later, and I guess I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!